Come on back. <laughs> Today we're talking about pride. Uh, I don't know if you have any pride in, in what you do. Um, I certainly do. Uh, but we're talking about how we can have proper pride and improper pride. There is both. Um, we've been talking over the last few months about making over our lives. So the question is, is, are you proud of what you've done with your life, or do you give all the credit for what God has done to God himself? That's the question. I can remember the first time that I saw a weight room. I don't know if you can or not, but I do. I was in high school. Uh, before I went to uh, North Salem High School, uh, we were in small towns, small schools. Uh, we were lucky to have gyms, let alone weight rooms. But uh, I took a class in weightlifting. I don't know why, you know, with my physique, um, I, uh, I really don't have anything to worry about with weight rooms. Uh, by the way, we, um, we took out the, the stove the other day out of the uh, kitchen over at the, at the parsonage. And uh, in back of the stove was a placard that said, Pastor's Study. I want you to know that I have spent plenty of time in the Pastor's Study. <laughs> I don't know how the plaque got there. It was like behind the trim. Uh, it was behind the stove. <laughs> I have no idea what it meant. But I want you to know that I have been studying diligently. Uh, <laughs> something to be proud of. <laughs> anyway, I remember going to this weight room. And I didn't know how these things work. And you know the coaches there, and there's these big burly guys, you know, and they got great physiques and they got great muscles. Don't have any brains, but they got great muscles. And, and uh, he's going, all right, now what you do is you go around the room and you work on every machine, you do every exercise, and it'll work out your entire body. And I'm going, okay, great. So I went up to the first machine. I, our weight room did not look like this, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I went up to the first machine, and I laid down on the, on, the, on the bench, and I grabbed hold of the bars, and I pushed as hard as I could, and nothing happened. Wait a minute. What's wrong with this thing? You know, nothing. Absolutely nothing. I'm, you, know, you know, I'm pushing, I'm straining, my legs are in the air, and I'm going, oh, come on, get up. <laughs> nothing. I'm going, coach, what's wrong? You know, I'm stronger than this. I can lift. And he's going, oh, here. You, did, you, you had the peg all the way at the bottom of the weight pile, so you were trying to lift all 800 pounds or whatever it was. Uh, I can lift up to 800 pounds. Uh, but 800 is my max, and I could not lift that at all. We have discovered here in, in Romans chapters 1 through 3 that we are under a great weight of sin. And there is no way that we can lift that whole pile. There is no way that we can do that. God has to come and take it away from us. And when he does that, then we are able to move on. Then we are able to help change our lives. But it is all God. He does it all for us. And so we need to understand that all pride, all boasting that we do, needs to be in what He does for us. The question that begins this paragraph, where is boasting, suggests that it is closely related to the previous verses. Uh, it is also related to the verses that come after it. It's related to the, to the previous verses in that it takes just one of those ideas that Paul talked about and we talked about last week, uh, and that idea is faith being the only way to experience God's justification. God's justifying us means that he has to justify to himself why he should let you into heaven. You know, when you go up to the pearly gates and, you, and God says, why should I let you into heaven? That's half the question. The other half is, why should I let these people these horrible sinners, into my heaven. He justifies that by saying, I will accept Jesus Christ's payment and let them into heaven if they choose to accept that. And then he justifies us and says, we are now clean of any guilt, of any punishment that he should uh, impose upon us. Does that mean that we'd never sin? No. But we are clean, we are free from the punishment of that sin. So Paul takes this one idea as faith being the only way to experience God's uh, justification. 
And he reverts to this question and answer uh, idea that he's done. He has done this before in the book of Romans. Uh, he creates this fictitious character, and then he has this conversation with him. It's sort of like having an, an, an interview on TV or on the radio. And so he's interviewing this person, and he, he supposes this person will ask him a question. He says, well, what about all the good things that I do in life? After all, I'm a good guy. I've done wonderful things in my life. I have helped people out. I hardly ever sin. I am good to dogs and small children. You know, I've done wonderful things. Shouldn't that let me into heaven? Shouldn't I be able to be proud of that? Shouldn't I boast about those things? And Paul answers that question here in these, in these verses. Paul wants every person to know that God's only way of justifying us is by faith. And when that, when we realize that, that excludes the possibility that any of us can be proud of who we are and what we have done in this world, that any of us can take credit for being allowed into heaven. You aren't being, going to be able to walk into God's heaven and say, hey, I deserve to be here because of who I am and what I've done. No one can say that at all. Now, he also might be reminding uh, his readers that Jews, in particular, have no means of boasting, no reason to boast. Now, they had received the law. They had Abraham and Moses and David, you know, in their family trees. You know, there was a lot of things for them to be proud of. But even they are not allowed into heaven on the basis of how good they are. They have to accept Jesus Christ as Savior. And so he talks about that particular thing. Now, this is modern art. Some company paid a bazillion bucks for this piece of art here. This is not an accident. This was done on purpose, and somebody got charged a lot of money to have this installed. Doesn't that look like a festiva? <laughs> I think after the service, we're going to need to go outside and pick up the festiva and see if we can get it that high off the ground. Um, <laughs> you know... This is nonsense to me. I don't know why you would pay this. Any boasting is nonsense in God's eyes when it comes to understanding God's grace. He does it all. And it's just nonsense to think that we could earn our way into heaven, that we could do anything that would be good enough to allow us into, a perfect, uh, into the presence of a perfect God. I put the little dead mouse there because I, I was looking at the word literally. Literally, this is a mouse. Uh, that's a mouse pad. And some of you are going to go, what are you talking about? I don't know. It was an ADD moment. Uh, so literally, the phrase here that we have is, through what law? Of works? No. But through the law of faith. So that's what Paul is really saying. Paul generally, though, avoids using that word law when it comes to having faith. But now he's saying, okay, it is the law of faith. He's going in an entirely different direction than he normally does, and he's saying this is the law of faith. It's not the law of Moses. It's not the law of works. It is a principle, as the NIV would say, of faith. He is saying that obeying the law can never save you. Only faith can. Then verse 27, 28 unpacks that principle of the law of faith and says that for we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from observing the law. You cannot be good enough is basically what it says. You cannot be justified apart from faith. Observing the law means that works done in obedience to the law of Moses. You cannot be good enough. I love that sign. Stop. Billion dollar fine. Who can pay that? Well, there's Buffett. Maybe this is in that part of town where Buffett lives. Uh, <laughs> it's the only way you're going to stop him from speeding. What's a $50 speeding ticket or, or stop sign violation? But God says the only way that we can be saved, the only way that we can go to heaven, is by being justified by faith and not by being obedient to the law. Paul's concern is to show that everybody needs to be clothed in Christ's righteousness, that all of the good works that we do are filthy rags. And we need to put on the cloak that God gives us. And then when God looks at us, he sees that cloak, those clothes that Jesus Christ has given us, those white robes, and he says, yes. Because of what Jesus has done for you, you are now allowed into heaven. Verse 28.